This was my most challenging field day ever. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So before we get started, let me tell you right up front that my uh, failures and successes and exactly what I did for my particular setup on field day is not going to be covered in this video. However, I will leave a link down in the description below for my full written after action report if that's something you're interested in. What I want to go through in this video was some of the challenges I faced in helping other operators get their digital setups up and running. Not everything went perfect and not everything was successful. And then after we've talked about a few of those uh, different situations, we'll talk about the fill day challenge that I put out uh, where we used Winlink position reporting to make some contacts. I spent pretty much the entirety of Saturday from the start of uh, fill day until about 10 o'clock that evening working on various problems. Only one of them was kind of a quick solution that took less than 30 minutes. Everything else took quite a bit of research on my part because I was working with computers that I was unfamiliar with and a lot of times radios that I was unfamiliar with. Right out of the gate, Ethan uh, approached me. Ethan is one of our youngest hams in the club and in fact, I don't even think he's old enough to drive yet, but he has a Zygo G90 and a MacBook that he wanted to get working with FT8. So the CE19 interface, I believe is the name of that interface, he had it, he had all the assorted cables that went with that, but he hadn't done any assembly on that. So I started doing a little bit of digging and a little bit of research and come to find out he was missing one key component. Uh, so while I got to learn a little bit about the uh, Zygo G90 and how to connect it up digital to a MacBook, we were missing a sound card. So he went ahead and ordered that sound card and we'll maybe try to help him get that up and running at one of the future club meetings. So unfortunately that first one right out of the gate was unsuccessful. Now, next up was Mark, and uh, Mark, I love you, man, but you really, really presented me with some challenges. <laughs> so, Mark came at me with a Windows laptop. Guys, I haven't worked with, uh, with Windows since probably the Windows 7 days, uh, so I've missed 10 and I've missed 11. Mark had two different laptops that we wanted to get configured. So we started with the uh, 2980. It's a Yezu single band, two meter um, only radio, uh, high power. I think it puts out like 75 or 80 watts. He had a signal link to go with that and he wanted to get that up and running with Winlink for two meter uh, Winlink connection. So we fought our way through that with me trying to relearn some uh, Windows things, trying to figure out what Windows assigned for particular COM ports and things like that. Finally got that going and we had success. After that, he was so excited, he wanted to try to reconfigure that thing using a DigiRig sound card and a Baofeng. Unfortunately, I never could quite get that situation solved. I had the radio PT team. I could hear uh, the digital noise coming out of it when it transmitted. But using the exact same setup we had used with the previous radio, the same antenna and everything, um, I, I just couldn't get uh, the, the audio coming from the gateway to be read by Vara FM. So we had partial successes there. Now you might think, well, I was running 75 watts the first time I was only running uh, 5 with the Baofeng. And that might have presented some problems. But actually, we had turned the power down uh, on the first radio simply because we were getting RF back into the laptop when we ran it at full power. We had just thrown up a very quick and dirty uh, temporary antenna. Didn't have a bunch of extra ferrite beads and things like that. Not a properly deployed antenna uh, that was giving us RFI until we reduced that power to 5 watts and they were okay. So never could really get to the bottom of why the Baofeng uh, couldn't get enough audio back into the PC for everything to be decoded. But we pressed on beyond that. 
Uh, his next setup that he had was a Yezu FT100D, I believe it was. Again, a Windows laptop. This one uh, he wanted to set up uh, on a different laptop than we'd already been working with previously. Uh, now, this was a new challenge, and I, I've got to say, if you're going to uh, have a radio that you're going to use in the field, guys, please carry your manual with you. Uh, at least in a digital format, a paper format would be awesome. And if you can find a nifty manual for it, that is even better a lot of times. Fortunately, Mark did have his manual with him that we were able to reference. Uh, the 100D is kind of similar to an 857D. So some of the menu items uh, did look uh, familiar to me. It wasn't completely foreign. Uh, we fought our way through that and did manage to get that one set up for HF Winlink. So Mark was a really happy camper. I bet we spent probably an hour and a half uh, going through all three of those setups. Might have been a little bit longer than that. Uh, definitely a challenge, though, having to do that on a Windows platform. That uh, It's been a while since I've uh, messed with a Windows laptop. Uh, another one on the list that we did get working, this one did not take too terribly long. He was literally this close to having it installed. Marvin W0MET uh, brought me a MacBook uh, Pro, I believe it was, one of the ones based on the Intel chipset, and he just wanted to get the field day logger installed. He, uh, like I said, he was literally this close. One command that he was running, which was the pip install fd logger command, was not working and the only thing he needed to do was instead of running pip was run pip3 install fd logger and that one installed right away so not uh, too big of a deal there that one was fairly quick finally someone handed me a linux laptop with a very simple problem they were just having a little bit of issues with pat and pat menu uh, that only took about 10 minutes maybe 15 to get that one solved since uh, that was kind of in my wheelhouse uh, running Ubuntu and Pat and Pat Menu. That one was a pretty easy fix, and he was ecstatic uh, to get that up and running. Now, the last one was a pretty interesting uh, little story here. Mike W4OPS came up to me after I'd been working on several other problems throughout the day. It's getting late in the evening, but he expresses interest in learning Winlink over two meters. He's done it over HF but he just didn't know much about the two meter side of it. So I told him, I said, let's walk over to the truck. And I did a quick demo uh, from my truck with a laptop and the FTM 500, showed him how quick and easy that was to get a connection to go through. He informs me though, right after that, he's already got a tablet set up with a Yezu radio. I believe that's a FT 6000, uh, one of Yezu's newer radios. He was running a MobiLink TNC into it and getting his APRS data off of the radio and into a laptop where he could work with it. So I'm sitting there looking at this, and I'm like, Mike, you've got all the tools you need already. The only thing you need to do is you need to add Woad to that tablet, and you'd be off to the races for making two-meter Winlink connections. So he went ahead, he, uh, I, I can't remember if he downloaded the app or if the, he actually already had the app on there. I think he actually already had it on there. Uh, where he had previously played with it uh, because there was a Telnet connection already configured. Again, I'm an iPhone guy. I've been working with Radio Mail, so it took me a few minutes, but I was able to walk through uh, the settings in Woad and figure it out exactly how to configure it for that MobiLink TNC. It's something that I had done in the past, but it had been a while, so it took me a little while of uh, hunting around to find exactly where to enter all of the correct settings to get that up and running. So we were able to successfully get packet connections running from Mike's truck. And then I showed him how to add new gateways and create new aliases and things like that inside that Woad app. So he was tickle pink because he literally had every tool that he needed already there. It just needed to be configured and someone needed to walk him through and show him exactly how those connections are made. So. All in all, a super, super challenging field day. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was uh, quite a bit of work, quite a bit of research. Thankfully, we still had internet at the site. I could look some things up online. But a really, really good experience for myself 
in helping others to get their setups up and running. Now, about uh, the field day challenge. The field day challenge was another huge success this year. I was thrilled with the number of people that posted position reports. If I can remember correctly, I believe it was 51 different stations, maybe 52 different stations that put the ACK Field Day Challenge or FD Challenge in their comment when they posted a WinLink position report. So late uh, that evening, I guess it was probably 10 o'clock, might have been 1030. I was able to sit down. I had written a script ahead of Field Day that I could use to search those position reports for specific keywords. When it found that keyword, it uh, copied or, or yeah, copied the operator's call sign and then gave me the opportunity to send each of them a reply message uh, for posting to the field day challenge. So the script worked really well. I was really pleased with that. If I can remember, I'll try to put that down in the description below. I'm not even sure that's on GitHub yet, but I can put it over on GitHub. If uh, I, I believe it's finished, I might have to do some little minor tweaks to it so it'll work on anybody's system other than mine. But I'll try to leave a link to that down in the description below. If I happen to forget that, somebody shoot me an email and remind me. Uh, but the, the script worked really well. I was able to reply to everyone that had posted that position report. And I was able to uh, sit down and reply to probably close to two dozen WinLink messages that came out over the course of Saturday. So I was really thrilled to see everyone uh, participating in that uh, position report challenge again this year. So guys, that's a wrap. Again, a link to my after action report is down in the description below. If you've got any questions, leave it in the comments. I'll be happy to help. Uh, in any way that I can. I hope you got something out of today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.